This is Justin Roth of Warcurs, and you are listening to the Phantasm Podcast. Phantasm. Maximum terror. Ah! That's your target audience, baby! Phantasm. Did you know something? I sort of enjoyed it. Phantasm. Sell the metal! Sell the metal! Sell the metal! Sell the metal! Ah! Ah! Hey, this is Dr. Vincent West, medical doctor with the Phantasm Podcast, and uh, we've got Justin today from War Curse, and we're going to be talking about their new album, Confession, which comes out uh, Friday, October 20th on Metal Blade Records. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing good, man. How are you? I am okay. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, Real quick, uh, when did you guys start the uh, writing process for Confession? Oh, man. We kind of wrote on and off during the entire pandemic. Okay. So, uh, some of these songs, I looked back the other day and, uh, you know, when you record something, it's got a timestamp on it. And I had a song that was started in 2020, like early 2020. So I think April, April of 2020 was the first writing session for this album. Wow. And, uh, yeah. forgive me my ignorance on this. What, what, what album number is this for you guys? This is album number three. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so jump right into this record um and again whatever you want to say about each track uh what can you tell us about the nothing the first track uh that song was uh that one felt kind of personal when i wrote it that was about the i watched so many people during the pandemic lose their identities and um you know whether you were on one side or the other i think it, things became very cult like you know i think a lot of people kind of uh i mean you, they literally just they they lost their, their their whole sense of purpose whether they lost their job whether they you know marveled and loved the fact that they were staying home and didn't have to interact with the outside world i just watched a lot of people basically like deperson themselves you know they 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 loved the authority they loved the excuse to no longer interact with people or go to work and I don't know. It's I, I'm always cautious talking about this subject because I know it's kind of a sensitive one. But yeah, I just I couldn't stand it, man. I couldn't stand watching it. I couldn't stand the way people reacted to it. And that song is just really just about somebody just begging to be fucking ruled over by some dictatorial government, just loving to you know being told what to do and waiting for the next mandate to be handed down. And right, that, that that's what I wrote that song about. You know. To to t- I'll, again, I hope I don't offend you with this. I I think it's man made. I think it's population control. I lost my dad to it. Uh, I've lost several friends to it. My uh, best friend lost his sister to it. And I've got friends that don't believe it's real because they've never had COVID. I've had COVID twice. It damn near killed me yeah. the first time. I had it a couple months ago. Florida's eat up with it. It's real bad down here. Um, I think it's third worst in the country. Um, but I had went into Orlando and got it <clears throat> wherever, but it's, it's crazy. I mean, and, and I don't know about you, but I saw a side of humanity that I had never wanted to see. Um, yeah, that, that's how I felt. And, and anybody that thinks that it's not real is an idiot. I mean, clearly it's real now, whether or not it was made in a lab or not, you can, you can debate that until you're, you know, blue sure. in the face. I think it was, sure. you know? um, but yeah, the reaction to it was just something that I had never imagined. I never imagined people would be so thrilled to have their rights taken away, and um, yeah, they it's, were. So. It's Crazy. It, yeah, it's fucked. Uh, the state of everything, and you know, I don't, I don't know if uh, I don't, I don't know if you feel this way too. I don't want to spend too much time, but I, I, I love that we're kind of on the same page with this. I think, but I, you know, to me, I don't think societies bounce back from it. It's almost like you've got people that get it, and then you've got everyone else that just kind of fell in line with it. But. I think there's some people that have had a hard time letting go of it. Um, I think that the social engineering and the and the propaganda was too good. Right. And I, and I think you've got like a small percentage of the population 
I, I mean, if you want to wear a mask, wear a mask. You know what? If you want to say you trust the science and you want to wear a fucking cloth mask, you're an asshole, you're an idiot, but whatever. I don't care. Do it. But um, it you've got people that are still wearing two masks and driving around in their cars alone. And I'm just like, what in the fuck? What happened to your brain right. that you can't let go of this? You know, it's, it's three years later right. and people are still terrified. So whether it was just the, 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 the you know, mainstream media brainwashing was – was better than anticipated or whatever. Uh, there's just a subset of people that cannot move on from it. It's crazy. I mean, there's stuff, if we were sitting at one of your shows and I wasn't recording, I would tell you some other thoughts I have on it too, but I can't. But it's, you know, it's... it's Yeah. It's one of those things where... Uh, I've already said more than I don't... <laughs> well, what you're good. And, you know, that's the magic of the edit button. We can just make some of those things just... Yeah. But but do you know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? Though it's like I think there are people that that uh, I have severe PTSD. I know the pandemic did not help that at all. But you know you also have to be able to just make decisions. I've got a lot of health problems too, and I mean I don't go to shows anymore. That's how bad it's gotten. My first show, I didn't go to the show, but I went down to a show to interview one of our guests we've had on for years and he was, Oh, you come to the show. It's like, and it's not that I want to go to the show. It's just, I don't, I, I don't have a strong enough immune system, uh, where I can actually go to shows anymore. So, which sucks yeah, well, because I'm an older dude, time. but it's, it, I'm not knocking other people for doing it. I just have to be cautious of what I go do. You know, like yeah. it's, you go to an amusement park, you're, you know, you're putting your life in danger. If you've got an autoimmune deficiency like I do and it's just it's scary you know but it's also you know there's people that that you know think it's dumb and and what but it's like I said I have friends that don't believe that it's real because they've never had it or had it touch their life where they've lost yeah. someone so but yeah but I love the way that I guess, I, guess, I guess they're lucky in that regard absolutely I guess you know even if they're crazy exactly yeah uh fortress of agony uh second track great track what about that one yeah Thank you. Uh, um, I wrote that one about uh, child sex trafficking. Okay. You know, the long and the short of it. Yeah, I mean, it's a horrible epidemic. You know, I was kind of, uh, went down the Jeffrey Epstein rabbit hole like a lot of people. Right. And, uh, yeah, yeah, that song's just kind of written about a very sad, disgusting, unfortunate reality that, you know, these kids are abducted and kind of told from the, the point of view of, you know, one of them living through that hell, so... Oh, gotcha! Very power, power, powerful track to me. It was a tough one to write, and uh, I was I was pretty happy with the way it turned out. But yeah, I mean, I I, I, I kind of wanted it to be picked as a single. I wanted to use that to, you know, do what little bit I can to raise a little bit of awareness. Sure. Yeah, that's that's what that song was about. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it's that's you know something definitely should be addressed about that. Um, I love that the record's so personal right off the bat. I, I'm curious if it continues that way. It's so 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 cool. Uh, let's see. Uh, track three, confession. So confession, that's a fun one. Um, and there's a lot of biblical uh, biblical themes throughout the, uh, the the entire album. You've got this. It's followed obviously by Miracle Broker. <coughs> sure. And then later on, you, you've got Return to Dust, which is another term written from the Bible. But um, confession to me, I, I grew up in a in a Roman Catholic family. I live in a very Roman Catholic city. I've always found it so absurd, the idea that you can be a total piece of shit your entire life. You can fucking go out and kill, rape, do whatever kind of heinous shit you want to do. And at the end of the day, you're absolved by confessing your sins to a guy in a box and asking for forgiveness. Right. I just think that's fucking ridiculous. I think if you're a, if you're a piece of shit, you're a piece of shit. No amount of uh, you know, a bought and paid for fucking forgiveness from the church is going to fix that so that, i wrote that song about uh the, what i call the confession loophole but um written from the the point of view of a deranged person who allows that loophole to uh to embolden him to go out and do this stuff so the guy on the album cover in my brain i concocted this little story about a serial killer that goes out and chops people up with an axe and <laughs> right. so, um, I, I don't use i don't use that the lyrics but you know, it's like in my brain that's what's going on in this guy's head this guy's just going out and doing whatever the fuck he does and then he he comes back and he gets his forgiveness and all is good he goes out and does it again so that's what i wrote that one about right it's very cool uh 
theme we got going. Okay, and then right into Miracle Broker. Yep, and Miracle Broker picks up right where that one left off, but uh, having a little more fun with it, um, poking fun of the Kenneth Copelands and the Joel Osteens of the world. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, these crazy televangelists and mega churches and just some of the absurdity surrounding that. You know, you you got paraplegics hopping out of wheelchairs and, and they immediately start dancing and hallelujah, you know. Right. Who can believe it? You know, so donate now. Call now. So operators standing by. I mean, yeah, Miracle Broker was a fun one. Very, yeah, that's... Uh... I'm trying to remember the, <clears throat> there was a guy that when I was growing up, my parents were both super religious. <clears throat> uh, God, I think he was based, uh, Billy Graham, that guy was terrifying. Oh, yeah. He, he shows up in our video, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, we, 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 we piped a bunch of those guys in, just like, just enough to where we wouldn't get sued, but like, you know, we, we definitely had some fun making the music video for that one, so we show all your usual suspects in that thing. Awesome. So, yeah. uh, let's see, Power of the Powerless. Power of the Powerless, fucking love that song, man. So, Power of the Powerless, uh, we wrote that, the working title of that song was uh, Killdozer. So oh, okay. that about Marv Hemeyer, the dude who built the Killdozer, and had finally just had enough and said, fuck it, I'm going to bulldoze half my town. Uh, that's That was what we wrote that song about. <laughs> so, that was a really fun one. <laughs> it's a fun song to play. You know, I don't know. I, I can I can relate with that guy on so many levels. I'm not saying what he did was right, but, I mean, who the fuck hasn't woke up one day and felt like driving a bulldozer through a, a building or something? Sure. Maybe, sure. maybe your job, <laughs> you know, something like that. Right. <laughs> uh, let's see. The Convoy. The Convoy, uh, another kind of, uh, I wrote that one, I don't, I don't think I left much to the imagination there. I mean, I wrote that about the, the Freedom Convoy in Canada. Uh, okay. Loosely. I shouldn't say I wrote that, I should specify. I helped massage that a little bit. The, that was the one track on the album that uh, Blaine, the vocalist, uh, he actually wrote the lyrics for that. But that's what that song's about. Um just again, just about these unchecked fucking dictators. You know, a lot of people, uh, when that song was released, it got a little bit of pushback from people who said, oh, they're just, you know, they're crying about vaccines and no, no, they missed the entire fucking point. I don't care if you want to get 500 shots. I don't care if you want to wear 13 masks in your car. I don't fucking care. Right. What I do care about, I don't think there's ever, ever an acceptable circumstance in which protesting a government can shut down your fucking bank account, a private individual, because they disagree with you. And to all the people who pissed and moaned because they missed the point of the song, this time they, they agree with the government, okay? Maybe maybe the people whining about the song this time, they're on the side of the authority. But what happens when they're not, you know? Right. What happens when it's your protest and your fucking bank account shut down? So, yeah, I think that, that situation was absolutely terrifying, and I think that the, the ramifications of that and the fact that more people were not completely outraged by that and the fact that Justin Trudeau didn't fucking find himself on the end of a fucking rope after that. Right. Just, uh, it's terrifying all the way around. So that's what that song's about. You know, and again, probably too much insight into who's interviewing you, but you're talking to a guy that's never had a bank account. I just don't. Oh, well. <laughs> My uncle... Are you, are you a money, m- money in the mattress kind of dude? Well, money in a coffee can. I got that. My uncle was a uh, Green Beret in Vietnam. Two of them. My uncle Cliff, I never met. He died there, got blown in half. But my uh, other uncle did, was a truck driver for years, was in the Hells Angels when he got out of Vietnam. But uh, cool guy, basically was my positive real, male role model, if you will. But just didn't trust any of it. You know, I remember wanting to go into the Coast Guard when I was a teenager, and he's just like, no. You know, living down in Florida, he's like, no, I don't want you to do any of that. And I didn't know until he died that what he did in the service. So that was just kind of a weird thing. But yeah, that whole thing with what you addressed with the convoy, I, it's, it's some crazy shit. Um, yeah, man, totally unacceptable. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's see, uh, Return to Dust. Return to Dust. So that one's just kind of like a little tug in cheek about a kind of a personal episode that a couple of us went through together and um, involving a, a whorish woman and uh, some scrupulous circumstances. So okay. 
All right, but but you know that doesn't make for a very good song. Nobody wants to hear you bitch about uh, that. So I, I kind of uh, used Adam and Eve as like the backdrop there, the serpent, the betrayal, the ah. Garden of Eden sort of thing. So yeah, it was just a way of uh, kind of masking a somewhat personal situation into a more relatable song, so that you know a broader audience could enjoy it. Nice and very relatable as well. Um, yeah. Let's we'll see. Uh, we've, all, we've we've all been there, that's for sure. Yeah, unfortunately, I think that's uh, whichever side of the knife you're on. But yeah, it's yeah, it's very relatable. Um, great track though. Um, cool Thank riff you. in that one. Um, uh, Sewing division. Yeah, and then that one I think kind of explains itself as well, and it, it goes back to what we were talking about earlier. You know, everybody's need to pick a side all the time, and it's definitely. I mean, it's it, this week it's on fire. The world's on fire. You know, with this Israel uh, Palestine thing. And, sure. I just, it, it's unbelievable to me that, it, and again, I'm not picking sides in that. If you see two assholes in a parking lot beating each other up, you don't have to fucking cheer for one of them. Correct. Like, you can just call them both assholes and watch, you know? You don't have to get involved. Um, and that's how I see a lot of this uh, this political bullshit between these two you know, these two parties that are behind closed doors, basically the same. Right. But, you know, in, in public everybody feels the need to it's like fantasy sports for nerds you know we've all picked our players and now we're going to root them on and right and, and you know see who wins it's fucking crazy but it's it's basically just about that you know it's two sides of the same coin in the fact that you know it, it was it was definitely exacerbated during the pandemic where a lot of people who may have been friendly before maybe they were friends maybe they were family members and then they they find themselves on two sides of a manufactured issue and they just want to fucking go to war over it. It's it's absurd. It's like, what are we fighting over here? Right. So, yeah. I mean, if you if you turn on CNN at, at nine o'clock and you watch it for five minutes, and then you flip over to Fox News and watch that for five minutes, you would think you were watching the news in two different fucking worlds. Mm -hmm. You know. I mean, if if one side says the sky's blue, the other side's got to come out against that. Right. And say, oh, hey, that's the most ridiculous thing ever. The sky is clearly teal, you know? Right. And it's got to be a big back and forth. And it's like, I just, I fucking can't outstand any of it anymore. We're living in a country where you're, you're constantly picking the lesser of two evils, picking between two fucking assholes. You know, whether you like Trump, whether you don't like Trump, whether you like Biden, I don't think anybody actually likes fucking Biden. But, um, <laughs> It's like, who fucking cares, man? Like, they're both fucking 80. They're both fucking rich, old, corrupt, fucking compromised goons. Like, we can't find anyone better in a country of 330 million fucking people to run this place. So, yeah, that's 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 the long and short of that, I guess. Maybe longer than short, but... Yeah, it's very relatable. Um, yeah. Uh, this is so cool, because I always love this band. Uh, you did a uh, Grip Incorporated cover, Rusty Nail. Fuck yeah, man. Um so Jason Vibrooks was our former bass player. Really? Jason, he, yeah, he plays bass in Exhorter. He played in Heathen, but notably, he was uh, one of the founding members of Grip Inc. with Dave Lombardo. Absolutely. So, yeah, I mean, uh, actually, the funny thing is, before, I never knew Jason. I didn't know Jason lived in my city. I didn't know anything about him. <laughs> but I was fan. I, I was a big, big Heathen fan. Big fan of Grip Inc. You know, so like when, when it came up that we were looking for a bassist years ago, and uh, our old vocalist was friends with him. He said, well, I, I know this guy. And, you know, he was in these bands. And I'm like, how in the fuck am I supposed to play music in front of this guy? <laughs> like, I was so nervous. <laughs> shit my, yeah. Like, shit myself the first time I had to play music with Jason. But as it turns out, man, he couldn't be a fucking cooler dude. He is awesome. And um, we talked about doing a grip cover the entire time he was in the band. We never got around to doing it. And um, it was kind of a nice send off, you know. This this is the first album with Johnny, our our current bass player. Nice. He's kind of like Jason's little protege, you know. But um, we just wanted to, you know, pay a little tribute to Jason, and also just, you know, we're big group, big fans. It seemed like a fun cover, and uh, we hope we did it justice. Oh, absolutely! Yeah, it's great. I I was like, holy shit, I know this. It took me a second. I was like, oh, I haven't heard this in a minute. So that was fun. Yeah. Um, and then uh, illusion of choice. I love that song. Probably my favorite song on the album. Absolutely. I think it was my favorite track, not to just... Uh, no, that's uh, sick, man. I, I love to hear that. I wanted it as a single. I lost. <laughs> so oh, no. I didn't get my way. I picked Miracle Broker. Uh, the label picked the second two, but I, I pulled for Illusion of Choice hard. Um, yeah, that song... Okay, I'll tell you what it's actually about. I wrote that song while watching the Matrix trilogy on repeat one day. <laughs> and... Uh, 
That's what it's about, man. That's awesome. But, again, but, it, but it's the same thing, though. It's like, you know, the, the, the fucking, the whole concept of just, you know, ignorance is bliss. You, these people, they accept the programming. They go through their fucking daily lives like a bunch of fucking bots and, you know, told what to do. And it's painful to be awake in a time like this. It's painful to see this shit for what it is. <coughs> right. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, um, oh, you're okay. But yeah, so, so I, I kind of, you know, some, some of it was, was directly inspired by some stuff that, that was said in, in the trilogy and some of it was, you know, sort of like the philosophy behind the Matrix. I think the Matrix is really cool. Like, they've taught entire college classes. There, there are courses around the philosophy of the Matrix. Oh, wow, I didn't know awesome. that. Yeah, yeah, there's like colleges that offer college classes about it. But um, yeah, I just thought it was a cool topic. I think that more than ever, when you look around, I, I know it's one of those crazy things that people float all the time and try to explain it with like, you know, fancy science terminology that's way above my head. But, you know, it's a fun thought that we're living in a simulation, you know. Oh, yeah. You're a product. Of, are you a product of my imagination? Am I a product of yours? I really don't know. But um, it's... uh. It's painful, you know, once once you take that red pill and you go down that fucking rabbit hole and you see how shitty the world is, you can't unsee it, you know? True. I'm jealous of these people who can stick their heads in the sand every day and not know what's going on in the world. You know, somewhere there's some happy-go-lucky dude sitting on his front porch in Louisiana eating a fucking ear of corn, drinking some tea. He doesn't give a shit what's going on in the entire world. And that dude is so much happier than I am. So <laughs> I yeah. should have just taken the fucking blue pill, right? Yeah, I mean, it's it's... I don't know. It's, uh, I think just like a lot of the stuff we've talked about, I think there, you've got, you know, the folks in this country that, <clears throat> that, you know, I, something that I have not to completely switch gears off that, but I think it's in the same thing. I don't understand the whole cancel culture shit. And it, as a, as an older guy, it actually infuriates me. And, I probably shouldn't say this. The people that, like, if I knew who was actually, like, controlling or started that, I would like to just club them to death. Like, I... Oh, yeah. It's like you've never done anything. Like, look, I, you're talking to a guy that's old man, used to pull a gun on him and threaten to kill him and all kinds of shit as a teenager and as, as an adult. You know, so it, we all have our, you know, rough spots in our life, but I've never wanted to go around and hold everyone accountable for that because my dad was a douche. You know, it's like... <laughs> I, I just don't understand it. I don't. I don't get it. I don't. I, it's. It's funny. It's like I, the youth culture in this country. I just don't understand it at all. I guess I'm just a stupid Gen X, or I don't know. No, it's it's tough for me. I got to walk a, a fine line here. You know, I'm I'm too old to be young. I'm too young to be old. I'm like right in the middle of this whole fucking mess. Where right. Like, there are some people that would love to take something I said out of context and run it up the flagpole and, you know, maybe get me dropped from my label or, you know, have one of my sponsors oh, give yeah. me the boot or something like that. You know, and it's for, for what? You people know, get off on that. Yeah. It's... Well, it, I, what I think it is, I think it gives power to these fucking, well, perceived power anyway. There's, they, they find a sense of power. These people have nothing else in their fucking life. They have no control over anything else. If you look at the people that are going around trying to cancel other people... I think you're going to find that it's the same kind of person over and over again. It's never, Amen. It's never a strong, confident person that's got their shit together. It's never somebody who has anything going for them. It's always some fucking basement dwelling, whether it's male or female, fucking gross-looking, blue-haired fucking jackass on the internet with a fucking Twitter account, a big mouth. They have fucking 15 followers. No one fucking cares what they say, but they sit around all day waiting for somebody else to fucking slip up and say something so that they can try to make an issue out of it. Yeah. It's like they have absolutely nothing better to do with their time. But yeah, it's like these people, they're just soft, you know? This whole fucking um, silence is violence or, you know, words are violence or you're literally trying to kill me with your words. It's like, no, violence is violence, motherfucker. <laughs> I've never been on the receiving end of it. Like... And like you said, that the people, that these people, they get just a taste of, they have control. You know, it's like <clears throat> I had a guy one time come up to me. Um, I Suffocation's my favorite death metal band, and I'm a, I've always loved them. Nice. And their new album is incredible, and and I just love the band. I'm friends with them, and anyway, but I was wearing a, a shirt somewhere, and this guy's like, "Oh yeah, I saw that tour on YouTube," and it's like. You know, man, that's great, 
and and good for you, but you you weren't there. I was, so you know, like don't just because you have access to the internet, which is great, but you know, for me, like if I could get rid of the internet, I probably would, like for everybody and just yeah. do everybody a favor because I think it's very cancerous, and I think it gives a lot of people uh, opportunities to hurt people. Um, I've watched several of my relationships go down the toilet because of social media, you know. Uh, yeah, no, that's funny. I, I don't, if I'm dating somebody, I don't friend them on social media. I never do. It, it's, it it's, it's dangerous. It's yeah, it's, well, it's just, you know, they see a girl like some fucking thing you post and then they want to fucking get stupid or I don't know. It just, there's too much. And then let's just say that somebody gets mad at something I said and now they want to rope that person into it. Oh, I know. Too, it's awful. I'm like too... I'm too outspoken of a person to to go put my personal life on social media. So, it, but yeah, if, I don't know. It's like a double edged sword. You know, social media obviously it had a purpose at one point in time, and I think that the problem is we all just kind of like lost sight of what that that thing was. You know, right? I think we we used to use social media in a way that was truly social. You know, you would meet people, you would network, you would look at each other's stuff, and you would keep up with people you haven't seen in a while. Absolutely. And then I, I think what it is is it became entertainment. And so now it's like versus following people that you know and staying in touch with people, you follow – I hate the fucking word to death, but you follow these fucking influencer types with huge followings. And now you're just going on there to be entertained by somebody else's life, which I think is a whole other like huge discussion that we could have. Again, like the, the impact that's having on young people especially. Oh, it's awful. It's, it's so fucking toxic. It is. Yeah. And, and now we all live in this fucking plugged in like fantasy world. But, but to, to the original point, though, the, the problem is what it has done is it has given a megaphone to the dumbest amongst us. <laughs> like the, stupid, the stupidest people on social media are always the loudest. And for fucking, you know, good, bad or otherwise, they, they say outlandish, stupid fucking shit and other stupid people gravitate towards them. And it just becomes a whole fucking snowball, you know. Dude, you are going to have to come back on and we just talk world p- topics. I-, I love talking with you. This has been a blast. It's like uh, we're man. I just, I just, I just, I just fucking call it like I see it. Man. Hey, man, I'm the same way. I've got a very, very opinionated guy. I'm probably too mouthy for my own good, but I, I love that about you. Um, real quick, before we run out of time, tell us about this great tour package you got coming for the uh, running out west. Yeah, so it's us. Uh, we're going out with a really cool uh, band on Candlelight Records called Arm for Apocalypse. Okay. And um, we're doing some dates with Ryle, which is another cool band. I think they're hopping on a couple dates. But uh, it starts November 1st. We're in Sacramento. Uh, there's a bunch of dates down California. I think we go into uh, Utah and then make our way back up to do like Portland, Canada, Seattle. So we'll be all over the West Coast, basically, West Coast and Canada, November through like November 15th or 16th, something like that. I can't remember. Incredible. Awesome. Well, kids, don't forget to pick up Confession from War Curse. It comes out October 20th. Go listen to it. Uh, Metal Blade Records. Justin, we should do this again. I've I, Seriously, I, I talk to a lot of people. I actually feel like uh, I could just let you just run, and I would just sit there and agree with you for a few hours. We could sit and hey. just... Uh, yeah. Run the gambit. No one wants to listen to that. <laughs> no one wants to hear that. They yeah, expect yeah, it yeah, from me it. here uh, at Phantasm, so yeah. I, I enjoy it when there's a kinship out there of someone that I agree with. So uh, thank you for your uh, sharing this record. The record's killer. I wish you the best with the tour, but uh, if you ever want to come back on, let me know. Absolutely. You're very welcome. It's been a good chat, and I appreciate you having me on. And you know something? I sort of enjoyed it. Phantasm.